Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, I am back down in the state of Alabama today, and apparently it's allergy season down here too, so y'all gonna hear me sniffling on this camera today. But I am on Pickwick Reservoir. This is first time ever fishing in this area, so we are exploring some brand new water today, and where I'm gonna start out fishing at is along a hump under the water here behind, of course it's under the water, it's a daggone hump. But you know, I'm trying to say, it's an old sunken island that was here before they made the reservoir and there's a nice little secondary channel that goes around it so I'm gonna start at the top of it and kind of work my way back around I'm, I'm spot locked right now and that's probably how I'm gonna fish my way back I, when I got out here I just kind of tested it to see how fast the current would be moving me and it's about one mile an hour today which is one of them things you know having not fished here didn't know what the current flow was going to be like but one mile an hour pretty manageable but a little too fast to be doing any kind of drifting with with our water temps where they are today which is 54 degrees here what i'm looking at right now on my screen so i'm gonna spot lock here drop some baits down 39 feet here to start with and we'll kind of incrementally make our way back around this hump if that pays off great we'll sit here and catch some fish if not we'll go hit some different areas because again fishing new water out here to explore y'all so come with me let's see if we can get some of these alabama catfish I'm gonna get us some baits cut up. I'm gonna do two skipjack heads and two skipjack chunks to start. I got some fresh skipjack yesterday before I left Tennessee. So we're stocked up on those, got plenty. I also got two red horse sucker that at some point we'll probably try out here. I'm gonna fish today and tomorrow down here in Alabama. So at some point we'll throw them red horse suckers on which is one of my favorite baits but it's hard to beat skipjack any body of water that has skipjack in it just naturally it's going to be a good bait for you so we're going to start out with those two heads two chunks drop them down i'm going to try to suspend a couple baits and throw a couple off the back i don't with the current about a mile an hour I don't know that we're gonna be able to suspend effectively, but I'm gonna try it at least to see uh, what kind of angle my lines are at. And uh, if we can, great. If not, then I'll just cast all four rods out behind us there. There we go. There we go, y'all. There we go. Oh man, that feels good right there, buddy. That feels good right there, y'all. We are hooked up with well, it feels like a pretty good fish here, man. It has been a long time coming. I'm on the move now. I started out fishing that hump, worked my way all the way around it. And buddy, there wasn't nothing to be had. I couldn't buy a fish. It just wasn't happening. So I've come over to the opposite side of the channel here and I'm just working the bottom edge of the channel. I'm 46 feet deep and I'm dragging against the current. So current's about a mile an hour this way. I'm pulling about 0.3 miles an hour against it. Just real slow working up through here. And this one just got smashed. This is the skipjack head. I've got this on a, a dragging rig with a fly running behind it i've been the last couple trips out i've been playing with this new setup here running these catfish sumo bait stalker flies off the back of the rig just to give it an extra just an extra presentation back there just something extra with that fly especially as you're moving along it's back there just moving man it's it's those the hair on that fly is just swimming along like a bait fish and so you've got your cut bait putting off the blood and the oils and the scent and then you've got that fly moving behind it man it's a oh i see that okay he's thrashing around on the surface back there i've run these rigs a lot farther behind me than what i would normally ideally like to do that's a good fish back there i've had to do that because of the the current the if you run them 
the distance that I would normally run the, the current is just going to raise them up in the water column. So I need them down there on bottom. Yeah, it looks like a good fish thrashing around back there, man. Let's see if we can get him on up here. When I come back, when I come to Alabama here, a little over a week ago now, I come down here for a couple days just to get ready for this upcoming tournament. Kind of the same situation as today. I, I, I'd done a few different techniques, but the only way I could get bit was with a moving bait. I had one session, the first session I fished on Lake Wilson, I dragged baits, caught fish. The next day I went out, hit three different spots. I did some drifting, I did some anchoring, I suspended baits, I fished on bottom. I couldn't, I couldn't do diddly poo. I, I mean, I just couldn't get anything going. Moving baits was all I could get a bite on. This one here is a good fish. So anyway, we tried it this morning here and couldn't, well, y'all have done lost my glove. I don't know what you have done with it. It's somewhere back here. But anyway, we tried the anchor bite today. Didn't pan out. So now we on the move. And we got us a good one right here. Oh boy, he's wound. Good news is, I found where y'all hid the glove at. It was under my seat. Let's get this one in here. That's a solid fish, buddy. That's solid. When he fills out a little bit, he's gonna be a much better fish. His head don't match the body. <laughs> look at that. Look at that head on him compared to the body there. He he slims down real quick, but that's still that's a solid fish, man. I tell you what, that that head right there still looks good. I'm gonna send it back out here while I hold this fish up. But this is my dragon rig. You can see the catfish sumo bait stalker fly. It's a few inches behind this 10 aught size circle hook with the cut bait. We got a float and rattle up to my dragon sinkers there on a three way. So I'm just gonna stick that in the rod holder. We'll start letting out some line while we hold this fish up. Boy, y'all, this fish right here is gonna be mad at me. I've busted his lip. He's got some blood coming out of his lip over here. He's gonna be mad. Nice, y'all. First fish ever on Pickwick for me. This is a solid fish right here to get things going with, man. He slammed that bait. Of course, part of it was just the fact we're moving into a mile an hour current, but uh, yeah, man. <laughs> Makes me excited. He's wanting to flop. I'm gonna get him out of here. Best I could. I could feel him. I could feel the energy brewing up in him there. I didn't want him flopping on me. But yeah, y'all, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stay on the move. I, I have, I have tried, you know, my last trip down here, like I said, I fished two days. First day I got out just covering water like I'm doing right now, dragging the edge of a ledge up on Lake Wilson. Had success, caught some fish, got some decent quality, nothing huge, but I got some decent fish. That second day after that that I fished, I hit two spots on Wilson there, and uh, I'd hit another ramp on up on Pickwick. Didn't do anything at the ramp on Pickwick. Didn't get by a bite. Went to them other two places on on uh, Wilson there, and just couldn't couldn't. I got one fish total, and and he was about as big as the bait. Just couldn't get anything going. So I was like, I'm gonna try this spot down here. We'll try some anchoring or spot locking and, and sitting there working around that hump. But when that didn't pay off, I was like, I'm gonna come over here and just get on the mope. Just drag some baits, work the edge of the ledge here. I'll show you here. Kind of on the graph, I've gotten off course a little bit. Let me fix that problem right quick. But what I'm trying to do is just work this brake line on the edge of this ledge. It comes up over here and you've got what looks like a kind of a, a deeper flat here. 20 some odd feet where it comes up on the shelf. But I'm on the bottom. We had a rod getting hit right then, didn't we? Had another little tap. But I just want to work this brake line, the bottom edge, all the way up through here. I'm just going to cover a big, big stretch of it. Just keep the baits moving and see what we run into. 
Okay, there we go on this side. He nailed it. This is on the, the chunk. I'm running two rods. I got a head and a chunk of that skipjack. And at some point up through here, I'm gonna bust out one of them red horse suckers. And we're gonna pull it along at some point. It's weird like that, you know, though it's, it's sometimes you can be where the fish are and they just won't touch it unless the bait's moving. And then these other times you pull by fish and you see them on your graph and they won't touch a moving bait, but you stop and you let that bait sit there and they'll eat it. I mean, it's just, sometimes it's just like that folks. And for whatever reason, that last trip down to Alabama and, and this one here now, it's taking a moving bait to get it done. So we're just gonna stay on the move the rest of the time I'm gonna fish today. Cover some water working along this ledge. There's some what looks like old creek channels that on the map that cuts in and dumps in on, on this side over here. So hopefully there might be some fish kind of staged up out on those places. And if we do and if we get a situation where I mark some fish down through here, maybe we come across some timber or you know some object or maybe one in front of these creek mouths or some fish piled up well in that situation i'm we might stop a little while and just sit there and see what happens but anchor fishing for the sake of anchor fishing just ain't ain't performing today this one here ain't gonna be as big as his friend a few minutes ago we're gonna get this and go on here on a little quick release, I think. Put us another bait on and get get it back out. So you tell these people hi and bye, would you fish? He's ready to go before he'll even tell you bye. All right, let's cut another bait. All right, I'm gonna take another chunk of that skipjack for now. We'll take a pair of scissors here. We're gonna cut these fins off of it. Rid of them things right there. All right. Now let's get this thing back out. I'm trying to work as quick as I can here because we ain't got but just fishing these two rods. And I like that when you're doing this style of fishing, there's two ways to go about it. Let's start letting out some line on this. There's two ways to go about dragging baits like this. You can do what I'm doing today and fish one or two rods and, and try to be precise with your location. When I say precise, what I wanna do is work that brake line, that bottom edge of this channel right now. That's what I'm working and that's what I wanna move along. When you're fishing one or two rods and you can keep yourself lined up with that, it's pretty easy to fish precisely where your bait wants to be. Other way to go about things is to use planer board. And personally, I hate planer board fishing. I hate it with passion. If the day comes where I gotta use planer boards to catch catfish, I'd just soon quit. But another way to do this style of fishing is to utilize the planer boards and kind of take a spray and pray mentality. Spread your baits out really far. You can get up on these flats, work back in these creeks. You can cover a lot of distance here in the channel and just try to and try to put your baits in front of as many fish as possible but you know me personally one i hate fishing playing boards and two i'd rather just keep my baits precisely where i want them to be because these fish when they're working up down these ledges they use those edges a lot I mean, that's where a lot of those fish swim along and so doing that allows you to keep your baits even when you're using one or two rods you can keep your baits in front of a lot of fish right, look right here look right here we just got one. I <laughs> had the dang ro oh, he come off. He co oh, that one did. But you know what? This one didn't. I had picked up on that other rod. <laughs> I 
picked up on it because it, it was coming through a rough area like it was about to snag and i went to pick up on it and try to maybe work it through by hand try to lift up over and it took off on me briefly now turn around this one's hooked up so we went through some fish didn't see anything remarkable there on uh on the graph as we went over either way do you know what's the most encouraging thing about this y'all is the fact that i worked that hump over there for way too daggone long this morning and couldn't get a sniff at the bait and i come over here and i start dragging baits getting on the move and and that's three fish here very quickly so that's encouraging in itself just to be getting getting some feedback here from these fish getting some getting some attention i definitely when i come back down here to fish that tournament i have no idea where i'm going to fish at yet our tournament boundaries are going to be basically the top of lake wilson to the bottom of pickwick any public launch site we can use i don't really have a good game plan yet this is my first time down here either fishing either one of these lakes i'd spent you know, when i come back down before there i'd spent them two days on wilson with the exception of about an hour or so i hit that one ramp on pickwick up there up river and then this trip down here this time i was wanting to spend a little bit more time on pickwick so i don't know where i'm gonna end up on tournament day but i'm pretty sure i'm gonna be on the move when i do i think that's what i'm gonna come down here playing and do is just be dragging baits covering water let's see what we got here all right we got us another small blue here small blue with a bad attitude is what we got come up here fish don't you leave that bait on there while you at it too he says he don't take orders from me none of these alabama fish like me folks when you're a tennessee vols fan everybody in the state of alabama is against you fish people all of them now he's a little bit bigger than that last small one but still not the size of the fish that we after today let me get this thing undone here he got me all got my leader all wrapped up i'm on we ain't had that bait out long but it's already looking rough i'm gonna go ahead and switch it out and we'll get back in the game here here's another one on the chunk i've went a i've went a little ways y'all without a bite there i thought we was about to just really get on some fish and start tearing them up but i bet you it's been 30 minutes since that last fish but meanwhile, I've just continued to make my way along. Just covering water. Probably what I'll do when I get this fish up, I, I think I kind of want to try out one of them suckers back there. Put it down and see what that'll do for I don't know what it is about red horse sucker. But boy, when I get them, now granted i've just used them back home but every time i get them things i seem to catch fish with them i've gotten some really good fish with them so i got two of them in the cooler i'm gonna put one of them on i reckon and see see what it'll do for us this in here yeah, it's tough to gauge <laughs> when you're pulling into a mile an hour current and pulling a fish with it it's tough to gauge exactly how big a fish is but i don't i don't think this one's going to be similar quality to our best one out here
that one was pretty good pretty good size that first one i think come tournament day when i come back down here for that it's going to take probably three of them though bigger than that to to win somebody's going to put up a good score down here it's just there's a lot of big fish down here on wilson and pickwick and it's just somebody's going to get on them that's how it always goes in every tournament somebody's going to be on some fish so it's going to take three yeah this one here oh look here look here y'all this one ate to fly there's my bait Well, oh, my bait just fell off the hook right there he's got that fly right in the mouth that's what i was hoping to do with these flies folks is pick up some extra fish because you're going to have a another presentation following along behind your dragging bait with all that blood and oil and scent and everything they hold him out like that that's a larger dink smaller fun size right there i mean he's a decent fish but not the size that we after down here today all right folks well before i before i rebate here let's just cut up one of them red horse suckers put it down and uh and see what it'll do for us if that don't improve our quality but uh, like i said back home man i've used them red horse i don't get them often it's just kind of a I, if you told me i had to go out today and catch some red horse suckers uh, it's a wish and a prayer that i'm gonna be able to do it but occasionally you luck into some and every time that i have i've caught big fish with them so excited to see what you can pull up with them down here in alabama by gosh here's one of these suckers here i'm gonna do a i'm gonna reel in that skipjack head on the other one over there and we'll keep the same type of setup going we'll just do a head and a chunk and all from a couple different couple different cuts down there cut these fins off this sucker don't need them on there all right folks that's our next two baits so i'm mixing things up a little bit i was on the other side of the channel over there dragging along and just ran through a dry spell just nothing happening over there just wasn't no taps no nothing so i thought i'm gonna mix things up because i'm out here just to explore having never fished this spot before it's just looking around see what all i can find so i've come to the other side of the channel i'll show you here kind of on the graph there's a little little cut that comes through here it's not very wide you got the shoreline over here on the right and over here beside me on the left is a hump that comes up pretty shallow right there and i'm just in this this 27 feet right here this little cut so i'm gonna follow it for a stretch we'll hit different depth here and see what's going on in here but this little channel that cuts through here it's so narrow that if there's a fish down in here they're pretty much guaranteed that my baits are going to pull by it i think this one might oh he is hooked up that one's definitely hooked up right there folks ever since i switched over here to this smaller channel here i've been getting dink tapped they've been going to town on these pieces of sucker i left these sucker on it's been a while i've been pulling these things i've left them on because i only got two and i wanted to probably save that other until tomorrow unless i just really got on some fish today with it you know but these dinks down there man they've been just chewing these baits up this one here finally hooked up and i'll tell you what he don't he don't feel too bad unless i'm just pulling him in sideways or something if he's got himself foul hooked but he feels pretty good the current over here the i'm gonna try to turn a second you see there's like a little bend here and the current where I'm at right here ain't quite as strong. Yeah, this fish here ain't, he's got a bad attitude, but he ain't gonna be as big as he's, as he's fought. I think he's gonna be a fun size. 
Well, I'll take that back now. Maybe I just wasn't seeing him in the right light, I guess. Oh, heck. Well, he is a fun sizer. And I was pulling him in sideways. <laughs> he's got the hook in the mouth and he's lassoed himself around the line. So he was, that's why he felt the way he did. These Alabama catfish, buddy, they ain't got a lick of sense. He got himself all wrapped up in that thing. All right, fish, let's see what you've done to yourself here. You can calm it down four notches, I will straighten this mess out. So he's got to he's got the cut bait hook in the mouth and he's lassoed himself with the leader line. You dumb fish. And he won't open that mouth for nothing. Let me just get that thing undone in a second. Okay, there we go. Now he's unlassoed at least. Now he's gonna fight and show out. He let me do all the work pulling him in. Now he's gone. Now he's gonna act up. I'm gonna bring this fish in just like that. I've had to lift up on the dang hook. He would not open his mouth for nothing. That's a pretty good fish though, man. This in here, folks, is a, a chunky little thing, man. He's got some, now we had that one there earlier that had a big head, but the body wasn't proportionate. And this in here's got a smaller head and the body's a lot bigger. Hey, some weird looking fish down here. And that last time I come down here to Alabama, I was catching them that had the, the stumpy looking tails. They were all weird looking. This one here's just got a bad attitude though. He's upset with himself. He didn't know he was on camera. He got himself lassoed in the line, made a fool of himself. He's embarrassed his whole family. You something else, fish. <laughs> nope. Lord, get out of here. Oh, ornery devil. Good gosh, that fish is fired up. Well, I'll tell you, man, I've just been moving along here in this little side channel and uh, just getting dink tap, but that one there is pretty good quality. So I guess I'll just keep on this path for a little while and see what else we run into. And if we go a stretch here and we don't get bit, well, I'll move back over the other side, keep mixing it up. Because I really just wanted to, want to get out here and explore, do some different do some different techniques, see if I can figure out what it was going to take to get bit today. And clearly I think the moving bait obviously worked better than me being anchored or spot locked there to start with, because I wasn't getting no action with that. But I uh, really just wanted to kind of look around and, you know, having never fished here before, just try to see what's out here. And so nothing else would get rewarded. Two things, when I go somewhere new, there's two things you gotta worry about. One, am I gonna get skunked? You, know, you wanna you wanna catch some fish wherever you go. The other thing you gotta worry about is are your car windows gonna be intact when you get back to the launch? And fortunately, this place over here, I hadn't I hadn't really got a good look at it on a map or anything before I come down, but there were several vehicles over there. It looks like it's a, a okay place to leave your car. So I think that's gonna be okay. But anyway, I'm gonna quit doing this, put another bait on there. I think I'll probably I think I'm gonna put some more skipjack on as we move along here, cause that that sucker there was pretty, I mean, he threw it off, but it had to be pretty chewed up with as many taps as it's gotten. So I think we'll put on uh, some skipjack there and uh, I may reel in this sucker head, just take a look at it. It's been hit several times too and see what it looks like. I may put on a skipjack head on that rod too. There we go, there we go, on the hip, on the hip. That's, that's rolling instantly right there. I put a skipjack head on when I switched out that the other bait after that last fish. That I reeled in that sucker head. It was all chewed up. Them dinks have been down there just destroying it. So I went ahead and put on another skip. I'm going to save that other sucker for tomorrow. But this skipjack head here just got something gobbled it up. I don't think he's gonna be the quality we're after though since he was see what he okay he ate the he ate the head. I saw him coming up there, I thought maybe he had that fly. Yeah, this definitely ain't a ain't the quality we're after, but it's another bite. 
We have had some dead stretches today. But that's two now here in this little this little side channel. This fish here wants every second of camera time he can get. I ain't getting you no front camera time, fish. You're out of luck. It ain't happening, buddy. I might hold you up and give you a chest cam view, though, if you're lucky. There we go. Yeah, he's a larger dink right there. Something's wrong with his bottom fin. He's got some... It's all tore up there or something. Something got hold of him. So he splashes us on the way out. Let's take a look at this bait. No longer and it's been down there. It ought to be in pretty good condition here. Yeah, it still looks good. I'm gonna just I'm gonna rehook it here. That fish there tore up the mouth of it. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep moving along here in this this little side channel. I mean I've increased my speed up a little more. Let's let that thing go back out there. There's my line wrapped around my rod tip, as always, when I'm trying to talk. But, uh, yeah, just uh, getting over here, and you can maybe see the edge of the land there, the way the, the, way the river runs. Over here, you're kind of out of this, out of the current, so it's, it's, there's still some flow, but it's a little bit lighter. And, uh, normally bends i like the outside bend but i just went on that long stretch over there and just and just hadn't got bit anymore so i thought it was worth a shot to get over here because again that this channel here is just so narrow and you got this hump over here uh, on that side i thought it's worth a shot you know places like this it's it's you know when you live somewhere and you can hit a place multiple times you can kind of you can kind of look right here that one right here getting hit i think he's got it too my gosh nope nope he didn't he hit it one of them little dinks but you know you can when when you live in an air well that glare or something else when you live in there and you can hit a place multiple times you can kind of figure out when spots are most productive and and kind of dial it in so that when you look at a weather pattern or water conditions or whatever you know where to kind of go but when you show up and you're brand new somewhere it's kind of you kind of just getting out and and just figuring it out as you go and so i wanted to come over here and check this spot out and uh so far we got two fish and another bite there but there's been a lot of a lot of uh small fish pecking over here and so seems like there's life but the quality hasn't been there yet but i'm gonna i'm gonna ride it out here we're gonna go up through here and hit a bit more of this and we'll see how much time we got left after that uh, i may may end up making a move and hitting another area out here before i call it a day uh, it just kind of depends on how much time we have left i got one working this rod here he wants it bad don't he he needs to leave alone. I don't think that nair is big enough to get that bait. I think he's either got it or he's got the... So we got something here. He's either got the bait and accidentally got that hook or he's got the fly one. If he got the fly, he best leave that bait on. Whoa jerk a knot in this fish's head if he not, okay he did he got the fly sure as the world come up here fish oh look at that look at that head bait it's about to fall off let me rescue this thing before we lose it there there we go yeah you old fish you lord you done run that hook you done run it plumb through your face there fish well, folks, that's two on the fly today. I added these flies recently to the dragon rigs. I had held off on it forever because I just, I thought I'd be snagged up all the time. But surprisingly, I ain't got a fly snagged yet. 
So it's really worked out and it's getting some extra fish. I think it just adds a little something extra to the presentation. We got a piece of cut bait there just moving along, putting out that boil and blood, and making a scent trail. And then you got that fly going right there behind it, swimming along like a like a live bait, like a fish, trailing along behind it there. So it's just another opportunity to to get bit. I'm gonna let out some line on that. I think I'm just gonna I think I'm just gonna keep going on up here. We're we're running out of daylight here. Probably ain't got but another hour, hour and a half possibly to fish, but for the time being, I'm just gonna at least gonna stay on this path. Look at this skipjack right here, folks. This is the biggest skipjack I have caught in a while. I should have weighed that thing to see how close we are to a record. That thing's gotta be well over three pounds right there. But I'm gonna cut up a couple new chunks and um, I'm gonna spend, well, I'm dark on that screen. I'm gonna spend the rest of my time here this afternoon working my way back down toward the car. And this ain't gonna be the best idea I've ever had, but I think I'm gonna drift my way back toward the car. I'm gonna suspend some baits and just let the current take me back. Now, the current, about a mile an hour, that's faster than I typically like to suspend drift, and especially when the water temp's still in the 50s. But the fish have shown a preference today to moving baits, and so this is just another, another way to present a moving bait to them it's going to look a little different so we're going to try it it'll either work out or we won't but we're going to put this giant skipjack that i've got here man that's a huge bait we're going to cut him up and put him to use well folks that sun is getting lower in the sky and i'm not too far away from where i launched at so i'm going to be wrapping it up soon haven't got a single fish on the drift so clearly not my best idea but you know, the speed, the current speed through here is half a mile an hour. I think TVA cut back some of the, the generators. And so half a mile an hour is perfect drifting speed, in my opinion, but just having nothing, no fish, not a peck at the bait, just nothing going on. So, uh, you know, it just is what it is. It's worth a shot. But I feel like overall, I mean, to come down here, fish a new place I've never been before and leave here today with having caught a pretty nice fish and getting several other bites i mean i feel feel pretty accomplished with it i'm gonna leave here happy today but i am gonna be leaving here soon go get me a bite to eat rest up and pick me out another place down here in alabama to fish tomorrow before i head back home tomorrow night so anyway y'all hope you enjoyed it i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching